Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to a new section of our barn banter. Um, Aaron is the reason I'm starting this. We've kind of talked about horse shows and what's happening in the horse industry, and we've been fortunate. I find it absolutely amazing the number of clients that we have kept track of and have kept track of us and have maintained a relationship with us and check on us. You know, uh, social media allows that to happen so much better now. And what started this all is, this is Erin Janowiak Schmidt, right? Yep. Um, we all know her as Erin Janowiak because, <laughs> and Erin is part of my life before Brent. And she texted me because her parents are still here and they were coming for the holidays and she, could she come introduce her husband and her two sons to the barn and the babies. And I took it the next step further. I go, you want to ride? <laughs> and so my sister Joni um, said that it was fine, let her ride her horse and she just got done. I mean, literally, Erin could probably go back in a week to the show pen. I mean, I was amazed and how well she remembered everything. But, so here we are with somebody from my past a long, long time ago, and they still keeping track of us. And I think it's important that we in the industry think about what these horses provide as a facilitators in the long run. So I'm gonna ask Aaron, I'm gonna let Aaron get started here talking, but you know, um, Aaron, what's the one thing or the multiple things that you remember about um, being a part of this barn that really resembled nothing of what it is today? <laughs> um, because this was just a 4 H barn, an open show barn. But what do you remember about your past and what do you want to share with people that you've taken on with you from that to your future? Absolutely. Well, first off, thank you for letting me let me come over and uh, um, to Joan. Thank you to Joni for letting me ride um, Eli. Um, gosh, it's it is like stepping back in time for me. I haven't been here to the the barn for thirty years, and when I say that out loud, it, it makes me think I can't believe it. I'm that old um, already now. But um, these are my best memories. I told my kids um, when um, I said we were doing this that I want you to see like a part of who I was, my childhood. This was my childhood when I think of my best memories of growing up it was the time at the barn um, not just with the horse um, and horses I just had one horse but it was I was telling Julie when we were riding like I wanted to be a Campbell sister I um, love these people and that that's what brings me back is they were um, such an impactful um, influence on my life in terms of the, the type of people that they are and, and your parents as well um, and all those siblings and um, just such role models, I mean, in everything you did professionally, just as I was hearing you, um, you know, in, do the introduction on the podcast, I was thinking about, yeah, you're, you're so poised, you're, and you're doing new technology that I wouldn't even know how to do a, a YouTube live, and, um, you know, and just accepting me back, you know, reaching out to you out of the blue to say, hey, I'm in town, can I, can I stop by, and it's, you know, I, I felt like, you know, there hasn't been 30 years. I, you know, no, doesn't seem it, that way to me, I does totally it? Agree. Like, it's just, you know, easy to, that rapport is there. But, I mean, my my best memories, that, well, I grew up as an only child, and my parents did not ride and really knew nothing about horses. And um, how I got interested in it in the first place, I don't really know. Honestly, I just was a girl that loved animals and, and started taking lessons. But as I reflected on those years in 4-H, I mean, definitely the best years of my life, but it, it just teaches you about perseverance, you know, working towards a goal. I didn't have a, a high dollar, you know, fancy show horse. I mean, I was really proud of the horse I had and I loved him and I, we always tried our best. Um, you know, you do, you do the best with what you have and um, probably made me a better rider just because it wasn't always, <laughs> it wasn't always easy. Well, it was very obvious today that you did not forget any of it, Erin. Well, I am telling you that very thank honestly. Thank you. Well, I, I made my kids video me because I, I want to see the, the proof afterwards. But, um, you know, you know, I just, it's, 
those memories, when I think about childhood in general, the memories that I have of the horse shows and being at the barn, those are the things that stand out to me. And that must be because those are the best memories. Like, I don't really remember a lot else about, I think about being in high school. I mean, a few things here and there, but it, it was those experiences that I had connecting with people. And I think that's what, you know, today's youth, sometimes I, I do worry having, being a mom of teenagers, you know, we don't have that personal connection anymore. Um, you know, everything is, become so virtual and you know back if you know I didn't have a cell phone you didn't have cable TV you know we just we spent the whole day on Saturday getting ready for the show and you know every little detail that I could to you know get that horse ready every speck of dirt and polishing the saddle I mean I just loved that it never was a chore it was just felt like I needed to do all of that and um, you know, leaving no stone unturned, get in preparation um, of what I could do to set, set our, you know, set us up to um, win. But um, I think it's just those values. It, as cliche as it might sound, it's it's like getting back to those simple values that human um, animal connection, just really setting your mind to something, and then and then having fun with it too. And you know, you can't control the horse and every everything they do and the spectators and you know noises and. I, um, the, the, the scariest part of showing horses for me was um, how my horse was going to get in the trailer <laughs> because he didn't like to do that and it was quite a, became quite a spectacle um, at times and that was that was the most um, stressful part that I remember but the rest you know once we got there it was like that was behind us and I just wanted to you know put on my you know um, best show clothes that Joni and Julie made me and um, you know just um, try try to live in the moment and I just I had, was filled with so much pride I was so proud of that and um, I um, when I graduated uh, from high school I, I went to play high school here and which they're closing I just I heard, yeah. learned that um, I, I went on to Purdue and I boiler up Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the final eight or whatever that's they call right, it. Elite yep. eight, yep. That's been really fun to watch. I live in Wisconsin now. They didn't do so hot um, in the NCAA tournament. But um, I went to nursing school, and um, my freshman year, I was part of the horsemanship team. Um, they were yep. horsemanship team where you, like, draw out of a hat, a, you know, a Mustang. It felt like you were riding. And, um, you know, all of those core skills, though, that um, – Julie taught me, you know, just your horsemanship, your equitation, because really you just get on the horse and you walk into the arena, you've never ridden them before. And these were, you know, not the best horses. No, <laughs> so. I agree. I coached the St. Mary's team okay, for years, yeah. so yeah, I agree. So yeah, I mean, you, you have to draw on your patience and, you know, um, faking it till you make it around the, the ring a few times. But, um, you know, as I went through um, college and had different experiences with interviewing or, you know, pursuing scholarships and even now in my um, profession. So now I'm a nurse recruiter and I interview um, young people, pretty much young people, because that's um, who's working in the hospital these days um, all day. It's um, those interviewing skills that I picked up from like trying out to be um, queen for 4-H. Um, being part of the um, horse and pony judging team, I learned so much. That was such a terrifying experience for me um, when I was doing it, but I was pretty good at it. And it mm -hmm. taught you how to um, talk in front of people when you, you're not necessarily even sure that you, you know, if you're right, what you you're saying. Them yeah, you're you right. gotta convince them. It's about the delivery, kind of like being in the arena. You know, you know, you might not have the best horse, but in equitation, you know, you can, you can. Uh, um, you know, it's more about you and how you present yourself. So um, those are some of the skills that um, I really feel like um, being in 4-H and, and um, being at the barn helped me because, um, you know, you, um, how do I say it? That, you know, Campbell's weren't my, or Julie, uh, before she was, um, before her and Brent were married, you know, you weren't my parents, but you truly were. Like, I, I idolized um, you and your sisters and, you know, your way with horses and just, how you weren't ruffled, nothing ruffled you. And I came from a family where like everything was, we were walking on eggshells. So, um, you know, I tried to internalize that as much as I can and I still try to when I'm, um, as an adult. Um, but yeah, it's just like that, that wholesome hobby that I still have that love for horses. I'm still drawn to them whenever we go somewhere and there's an opportunity to go on a trail ride or, you know, uh, you are talking about um, taking my boys to one of the national parks and going on a ride. I just, that's like my best memory of the trip was, was doing that. So um, just so many, so many good memories. Aaron shared with me um, while we were riding just a little bit ago, um, 
I think I find the most amazing thing is when you, any of you come back here, it's like you were here last week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we sit down and talk like you were here last week. Right, right. That and Erin just shared with me, because I asked her, you know, what did she, what does she think she takes with this as far as what her horse experience did for what the challenges she accepted in life and or it, or it been challenged her in life. And she just shared with me something that I think it's a little tough. <laughs> but Erin battled cancer. Yep. And Erin shared that there were things that she believes that she learned because of her grit and things here. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. she was able to deal with whatever happened to you on a given day, you were going to get through it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I was um, uh, sharing that. Well, March is um, National Colorectal Cancer Awareness uh, Month, and I was a young, you know, early a woman in my early 40s, healthy, that was diagnosed with stage three colorectal cancer, and so had um, you know all the different treatments available to to get rid of that. Unfortunately, I'm coming up on almost five years of being cancer free, and they consider you cured at that point, but. Um, I do think about the grit that it takes, you know, when someone faces a diagnosis like that, um, when you have young children and a career. Um, and I, I do, I mean, I really, um, it was scary initially, but um, I just kind of plowed through that treatment. Honestly, I wasn't really thinking about um, the bad things that could happen. And I, I, I kind of equate that to the grit you have when you work with a, an animal that, um, you know, things happen, they go lame, they, you know, hit a rock, and now you're out of, you know, one of the, the big shows, qualifying show that you want to be at. Um, and this is an industry where you just can't give up. Like, these horses are depending on you, just like your children are depending on you every day. You gotta, you have to keep going. And, um, you know, there's there's just so much to look forward to when, um, you know, you think about a show season and the goals that you have that you set forth at the beginning of the year. and. Um, I, I do feel like that perseverance, that determination, like nothing is going to stop me, I'm doing this. Um, I do think that has, that, that I learned that in an early age through working with horses in competition and, and have carried that, you know, for me. And even with careers, you know, I've had a few um, different jobs um, that I was really proud of. And, um, you know, I can't say enough about the interviewing skills now that I sit here and kind of reflect on it. Um, I worked in um, pharmaceutical sales for some years, and those were really hard jobs, you know, at the time to get, and you really had to be a good interviewer and good salesperson. And, I, you know, my public speaking experience was all through 4-H and, and horse and pony judging. I didn't take any extra speech classes in college or nothing like that. So um, it came from being around people that um, were a good influence on me and knew how to speak with adults. <laughs> And I think you learned that in Horse Pony, the respect that you have for like your instructor and you know people that you really look up to um, in this industry. And for me, like my mentors being an only child, I mean, really, it was Julie and Joni. I spent a ton of time with them, so um, they're modest, but you know, there's so many good memories of you know picking out what what is going to be your show jacket for the that season. And those were just those are the best of times. Well, and um, I have to share with you if ever I think about. You, you are my only student that ever, I believe you had a job after work, so it was hard to do lessons or I something. I pigeon coops. <laughs> and she would come and spend the night, and we would get up, and we would do our writing lesson before I went to work. So we were up at 5 o'clock in the yeah, morning. I barely remember that, Julie. Writing, <laughs> and um, you would come out here, and we would do your lesson. I'd come in, get cleaned up, and I'd go to work. You were yeah. my... That is the type of dedication you had to do this that you were willing to, and you know, and a lot of teenagers, you tell them five o'clock in the morning, they're like, don't count me in. <laughs> I can hear my family laughing in the background now, like, what, you really did that? But I had forgotten about that. Yep, but um, yep. yeah, there was a period of time. I mean, I, I, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to be a Campbell sister. I wanted to live out at the farm and be around the horses more than, than, I, than I could. But um, it does take a lot of dedication and um, I'm so grateful that I had, had the opportunity to, to do it. Well, we're just happy to have been a small part of your <laughs> Thank life. You. And, Thank you. Um, uh, you know, if you're going to give any advice, I mean, we're about wrapping up here. If you're going to give any advice to any exhibitor, parent, child, is there anything that you would like to say that, you know, take these wings and fly with it? 
I, I think it's, um, well, trusting the process, you know, finding someone who can guide you, especially if you're a youth that, you know, you know, you don't have um, a family that's, you know, grown up in the industry. Um, you know, you need to have someone who, who can really help guide you and, and um, help you make those big decisions, help you have the right horse, learn, you know, have good lessons, definitely. Um, but also just, you know, getting outside, I think is so important. And even with my own kids, they're not in, into um, horses, they're more into fishing and hunting, but just what they, I, I see a difference in, in kids today, teenagers especially, that who have like hobbies outside of um, just, you know, video games and, and being on social media, like that human interaction and that interaction with nature, I just think makes you appreciate the world around you so much more and it's so healthy, you know, yes. for you. So, um, you know, and, and for me it was horses, um, you know, I was outside and, um, outside all the time and it was good exercise but it didn't feel like you know exercise yeah. and keeps you yeah yeah I think that there in there, there's um you hear so much in the, the news too about mental health and young people and you know that there's a bond with the animals um that I think is just really important it kind of filled it definitely filled a um something in my in my heart in my life that I that I needed but um yeah well, stick stick with it I mean it's it's and it and what a what a gift to you know work on an animal um you know for for years and and come out with a um you know a horse that someone else can can benefit that's exactly what, you know that's yeah. what happened with my horse was i went to college i I, prep, I knew that i wasn't going to be keeping up with um you know showing horses so we sold the horse and you know i think it, it was shown um for a while after that and, trying and to then get, he ended up in a forever home yeah yeah, yeah. very then, much retired and yeah. very much forever home yeah so. which is which is the best could ask for them, so. Well, we want to thank you all for our little bit of barn banter. I'm going to be collecting up many more of our previous clients and sharing with you their experience to what horses did for them. So like us on YouTube so that you will be able to watch these as they come up. But uh, thank you, Erin, and I hope you have a wonderful Easter. Thank you. Thank you.